Greetings, Science Maximites. Welcome to Science Max Experiments at Large. My name is Phil, and today on Science Max, we're going to be looking at gravity. What goes up must come down. Today... Gravity is the force that makes things fall <laughs> towards the ground. But just because it's a force of nature doesn't mean that we have to listen to it. No! Today on Science Max, experiments at large, we're going to use everything in the power of science to defy gravity. Ha <laughs> ha! We are going to be making a hoop glider. Now, hoop gliders may not look like much, but they fly just like paper airplanes. Woohoo! And here's how you can make a hoop glider. Here's how you can make a hoop glider all your own. This is what you need. Index cards, scissors, straw, ruler, pencil, and of course, science tape, which is just like regular tape, except you use this kind of tape for science. So here's how you do it. Take your index card and cut it into three equal lengths. Take two strips and you take your science tape and you tape those two strips and make a hoop out of it. And with the small strip, you want to make another hoop. Now, what you want to do is take your straw. Now, this straw has a little scoop at the end, and that's not very aerodynamic, so we're going to get rid of that. Ooh, maybe it was kind of aerodynamic. All right, now that we've got the straw, you have to align the hoop and the straw together. So here's what I like to do. Take some science tape and stick it on the straw and then align it so that it's perfectly straight, and then stick it on. Looks straight to me, all right? The small hoop also has to be perfectly aligned with the first hoop. So again, put the tape on the strap first, then align them up, and then start looking down through it, to make sure it's aligned. There. Once you have it all taped together, you're done your hoop glider. And it flies just like a paper airplane. Pew! Awesome. So that's what we're gonna do today. We're gonna... We're gonna, oh yeah, I gotta clean that up. This is ferrofluid. It is ferromagnetic, which means it's attracted to magnets. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, it's not that interesting. Well, watch as I put it next to this magnet. Mm -hmm. Very interesting. And because it's a liquid, it behaves in very interesting ways. Watch this. Unlike most things ferromagnetic, like paper clips or iron filings, ferrofluid is a liquid, which means it behaves in a unique way. The spikes it creates are following the magnetic field lines of the magnet. You can see the magnetic field in 3D. It's even more impressive when we max it out. This is ferrofluid outside of a glass jar. Now, it's sitting in a pool around this electromagnet. And this is a dial which I can use to change the voltage of the electromagnet, making the magnet stronger. Watch this. Changing the current going to the spiral in the middle turns it into a magnet. The more current I put in, the stronger that magnet becomes, allowing the ferrofluid to climb the spiral to the top. And remember, even though it looks all spiky, it's still a liquid. I will demonstrate with my plastic spoon. And watch this. When I turn the magnet off, it stops being spiky. Turn it on. Turn it off. Science. Ugh. The Wizard Academy. All you have to do is demonstrate true magic. And you will be granted entry. Well, Fuzzix, who is the next applicant for the Wizard Academy? Overwhelmo. Indeed it is I, Overwhelmo. And prepare to be overwhelmed. Would you be flabbergastified if I balanced this coin on its end? Not really, no. But would you be impressed if I was to balance this coin on top of this coin? Possibly. Prepare to be flustered and stupefied. Stupid. 
Still be flustered as I balance three coins on their ends on top of this glass. Well, that certainly would seem like magic. Let us see. Okay. No pressure, Ovo You can do this. And now I say a magic word. A magic word! Ha ha ha! And now you must let me into your academy. Wait. What's under the cloth? What, what cloth? This cloth, nothing! Oh! Is that a magnet? This, no! The pull of the magnet is what's keeping those coins up. The magnet is just strong enough to keep the coins from falling. No, this is set, set dressing. It's just... <laughs> it was a good trick, but it's science, not magic. Well, yes. And you will see! You will see! I will be back! I, Overwhelmo, will return! And I will do such magic that you will need extra socks because I will knock them off! With my magic, you will need at least two pairs of socks, maybe three pairs of socks. We can still see you! No, you can't! Oops. Uh, an egg. Now, you might think of eggs as kind of flimsy, and they do break pretty easily, but eggs are, <laughs> eggs are actually stronger than you think. It's because they're, well, egg-shaped. You see, the top of the egg is like a little bit of an arch, and the bottom of the egg is also like an arch, and arches distribute the weight, just like they do in a bridge. Here's how you can experiment with how strong eggs are. First, you want to get a pair of gloves to protect your hands from the shell, just in case anything goes wrong. You should also tell an adult that you're doing this experiment, because if it does go wrong, you're going to have some mess to explain. And also, you should probably put on some safety glasses. Now, here's what you do. Take your egg and carefully put it in your palm just like that. And put it against your other palm, and you're going to push in directly on either side of the egg. Start pushing harder and harder. You can even lace your fingers and press even harder. And if you do it right, the egg won't break. Pretty amazing, right? So just how much weight does an egg hold? Can one egg support my entire weight? Let's find out. I'm going to lift my weight up like this and lower myself down. And no, cannot hold my weight. Can my weight be supported by two eggs? Oh, nope. Phil's weight, four eggs. <laughs> oh, I thought they were going to do it. Nope. My weight? on eight eggs. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Huh? <laughs> My weight can be supported by just eight eggs. Science! <laughs> Whoa, careful. Magnetic putty in 60 seconds. This is magnetic putty. Thank you. This is magnetic putty. Ten take. This is magnetic putty. Twenty-six. This is magnetic putty. Two thousand six hundred and thirty-five. This is ants. Yeah, this is magnetic putty. I can't count this high. This is magnetic putty. <laughs> magnetic. Oh. oh, it's not a magnet. It's attracted to magnets. Oh, that makes more sense. This is magnetic putty, and this is a magnet. The putty is made of polymers, which means it can flow over itself. It also has lots of iron filings in it, which is why it's attracted to magnets. This is what happens over several minutes. And there you go, magnetic putty. Okay, so where were we? Oh, yeah. Three. 
two, one, yeah! And remember, don't try this at home. Ah! <laughs> slime! <laughs> Sarah and I enjoyed our maxed out tub of slime. <laughs> so let's recap. Slime is made of polymers. Polymers come in a lot of different forms. It's all about long chains of molecules. And none are more fun to swim in than slime. Do I have slime hair? Ooh, yeah, definitely. Slime hair! Oh, slime! <laughs> <laughs> Experiments at large, polymers, slime, yeah, high fives, yeah, slimy high five. Yeah.